Hello there, mathletes. We now have 4.5, which is graphing using x-intercept form. So we've come up with all these strategies from before. Now we're going to be looking at what x-intercept form is. So first I want you to note this right here, that x-intercepts, there's a, more than one way to say it. We can also say zeros. We can also say roots. So anytime you hear any of those three words, they're talking about the x-intercepts on a graph. And, uh, and so the form that we have for x-intercept with quadratics is y equals a bracket x minus r bracket x minus s. And these here, r and s, are your x-intercepts. Okay? So if you look on the graph, here is your r and here is your s. Notice it was minus r and minus s, but when we put it on the graph, we do positive r and positive f. So we always do the opposite of the values that are there. And so this will always be the form for how you get your x-intercepts. As an example, y equals negative 3, x minus 2, x plus 1. So your x-intercepts are 2 and negative 1. And so you'd put those on your graph. When you look at the graph, there's three different cases that you could have for any parabola. You could have two zeros. So you could have a graph that goes like that, for example. One zero. You could have a graph, sorry, that comes, touches, and then goes right back down. So notice it's only touching at that one spot here. It's touching in two spots here. And no zeros. You could have a graph that's just right up here, or you could have one right down here. It, there's no spot that it ever touches this x-axis. So here there are none, here there's one, and here there are two. So the steps to graphing using your x-intercept form are as follows. Um, and this is just, again, another tool to graph the quadratic. We've done a bunch before. This is just another one. So the first thing you need to do is determine your zeros. Once you've determined your zeros, you need to determine the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry for a parabola will always be halfway between your, um, your two zeros. So to get that axis of symmetry, you can add up your two zeros or your two x-intercepts and divide by two. Once you have this value, you're going to take the value you got from step two and you're going to substitute it back into the equation to get the y value of your vertex. Once you have that, you have your x-intercepts, your y-intercepts. You can also find, uh, sorry, your x-intercepts, your vertex. You can find your y-intercept by making x equals to zero and you have all your key points. Vertex, x-intercepts, and your y-intercept. Okay, so we're going to do an example now. And so the first part we're asked to do is to describe this graph. And so if you're describing this graph, there's many different ways that you can describe it. You can talk about uh, any of the transformations. So its A value is 1. So it has the same shape, so no transformations. You could talk about its x-intercepts. And so let's do that because we're eventually here going to have to, to state what they are. So the x-intercepts of this graph, again, we get them from each bracket and we do the opposite. So x minus 4, the x-intercept is actually 4, and the other x-intercept is negative 2. Now, why do we do the opposite? If you remember, any x-intercept is when y equals 0. So this is saying 0 equals x minus 4 and x plus 2. And so if 0 equals this, 0 has to equal this one and this one. So we then have 0 equals x minus 4 and 0 equals x plus 2. And if you solve for x in each case, isolate for x here, move to the other side, we get 0 plus 4 equals x, and 0 minus 2 equals x. So 4 equals x, and negative 2 equals x. And notice these are the values that we came up with here. So this is another way you could describe the graph. Um, we're going to sketch it eventually. So we're going to go through and, and do all these labels. So we need the x-intercepts, we need the vertex, and we need the y-intercept. Let's jump to the y-intercept now. And the y-intercept is when you set x equal to 0. So if we get our equation and we set our x equal to 0, that's 0 minus 4 and 0 plus 2. So y equals negative 4 and 2. So your y-intercept is at negative 8. Now we need to find our vertex. So this is going to use the steps that we talked about here. So we have our x-intercepts here of 4 and negative 2. We're going to add those two together and then divide by 2. This is going to give us our axis of symmetry. So x plus negative 4 is, sorry, 4 plus negative 2 is 2 over 2, which equals 1. This is our x value for our vertex. Now we have to sub this back into our equation. y equals x is 1 
sorry, minus 4, and 1 plus 2. So y equals 1 minus 4, we get negative 3, and 1 plus 2, we get 3. So y equals negative 9. So our vertex for this equation is 1 comma negative 9. So we have all these key points. We have our vertex. We have our y-intercept. We have our x-intercepts. And the other part we can say is max or min. How do we know if it's a max or min? By looking at our a value. Our a value is positive, And any positive a value means that the parabola opens up. And if it opens up, this is at a minimum value. So now let's graph this. And so make sure when you're doing your graph that you label your axes, so x and y. And I've already gone here and I've labeled the um, x-intercepts. And here I've labeled negative 8 for the y-intercept and 1 comma negative 9 as my vertex. And you simply draw your curve. And there is your parabola. So there's another example here. Please try this example on your own, and we will check it in class. If you have any questions, make sure you write them down, and we can answer them during class time. See you there. Bye.